All right, here we go. Episode six of our Oath Swarm. We're going to paint one of the heroes. We're getting there. We're moving along. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, but as always, first off, I want to thank all of our YouTube members for all of your awesome donations. You guys are amazing. You guys help make this possible. And I wish I could pump them out faster, but life gets busy, unfortunately. But I make time for you guys and everybody who else who watches. This is your first time at the channel, or if you are a returning person, hit that subscribe button. What do you got to lose? We're going to be doing Oathsworn. We have a bunch of other games coming up you don't want to miss out on. All right, without further ado, let's go. All right, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to wanna to build this miniature. Now you can keep it in place without gluing it, but it's a little flimsy. If there's one complaint I have, it is that. Um, but I'm going to glue this in place. And as you can see, I have the armory edition that I got through Kickstarter. So I'm gonna put the sword in there instead of the mace or whatever else he was holding. After you let that glue dry, we're going to take some primer. Now you can see in the background I'm doing all of these at once. So I'm going to take my airbrush and I'm going to spray this with some primer, black primer, and let them dry completely. Next, take some neutral gray. You can use Mechanica Standard Gray. You can use whatever basic gray you do have, and you're going to dry brush this on our miniature. This is going to help create the highlight, not make it too bright because none of these miniatures are bright at all. We're just going to give it that nice little contrast to begin with. Starting off, we're going to use our metallic colors. Now, a lot of this miniature is metal, as you can see with our armor on our penitent, the shield, the sword, everything else. We're going to be using this base color on there. Now, it might look a little opaque at first, very translucent, but it's okay. Trust me. Trust the process. Trust what we're doing. And just follow the guide. Pretty easy. Now I painted this color specifically, the Grey Knight Steel, on all of our armor pieces. I didn't use it on the sword. You can use it on the sword. I really don't think it makes a difference because I did use Lead Belcher on the sword thinking it makes some kind of variation. It really doesn't. So you can do the whole armor or you can do the Lead Belcher as you'll see here in a little bit. And this is what it should look like. Now once your paint is completely dry, take that Ruin Fang Steel and you're going to dry brush that all over armor bits. And then cover our entire armor in Nolan oil and let it sit and dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. Go do something else. Go do some push-ups. Go run around the block. Go get a snack. Pop tart. Whatever you gotta do. Now once it is completely dry, take some of that Necron compound and just dry brush the living crap out of this thing all of our armor bits. Now you can see that this miniature has some dark recesses mixed with some very light metallic dry brushing to bring this thing to life. Moving on, we're gonna take some of the corn red. Now we got all that messy stuff out of the way. Now we gotta start being careful. You gotta have all that fun with just slopping that paint all around, not worried about where you get the dry brush or anything else. 
take that corn red and put it all over our cape areas. Now I kept the inside of the cape that you can see through dark. You're not really even going to notice it, I guarantee it. That way you just kind of save yourself the headache of trying to paint behind the legs and everything else. For our metal pieces or brass pieces on the top, we're going to take some Balthazar gold. They remind me of the, I can't think of the name of them. If somebody can leave me a comment below what they're called um, in Warhammer 40k. I can't remember what they're called. You know what I'm talking about. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. For our pieces of parchment, of the things I still can't think of, I could look it up on Google, but I'm not. I'm trusting in you guys to tell me what they are. Um, you need some character stone on those. For the handle, we're gonna use some Barrack Nar Burgundy. Um, it's kind of a new color. I wanted to try it out. You can use whatever you want. I just want to see how it looked. I liked it. It wasn't bad. For the brass pieces on our sword, we're going to use some Ruin Lord Brass. For our belt, we're going to use some Rhinox Hide. Just be a little careful when you're doing this. Don't go too crazy with it. And for our sword, kind of like what I was talking about a little bit earlier, we're going to use some of that lead belt. We're also going to use this on the belt buckle and the belt studs as well. For our fur cape, we're going to be using some of that gray sear on the front and the back of the fur. I mean, we got to keep our penitent warm while fighting off all of the monsters on the wire road and in the deep wood. Ah, this game is so good. Um, for our undershirt, I guess you could say we're going to use some Basilicanum Gray. It's going to be a dark color. You're really not going to notice it again, but um, if you did like I did, you got some metallic on there. It just covers it up. We're using three washes. The first one I forgot to videotape myself, I guess you would say. Um, Caribou Crimson on all of the red and then followed by a Agrax Earthshade on all of our brass pieces, our parchment and the belt as well. And for the metal sword, obviously, uh, you can use Nolan Oil. If you want to use Nolan Oil on the brass pieces, you can too. I just think it looks better if you use the Agrax or Shea. It gives it a more earthy look, hence Agrax or Shea. Now once everything is completely dry, we're going to start our dry brush on our cape and red areas. Now I used a bigger dry brush for the cape, 
back and smaller one for the front, we're gonna use the first color here. Next, we're gonna take some word world, there we go, bears red, and we are going to dry brush that on there again. Now take your time, but if you mess up and get some onto your armor, just take some of your metallic color and just quickly patch it up. Again, you won't notice it. And as we keep building up the highlights, we're going to take some of that tusk gore fur and again, just very lightly dry brushing that on there. And you can start to notice it's starting to get a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter on those raised areas. Now I want to push the color just a little bit more. We're going to take some of that test core fur and we're going to take some wrath bone and we're going to mix those together. I'm going to use this two or three times to make it lighter each time and we're just going to slowly dry brush over the same areas. Make sure you get all that paint off the dry brush though. And when I was satisfied with one layer of the dry brush, I went back, add a little bit more Rathbone, made it a little bit lighter, and just continue this, like I said, about two to three times. To your liking, it doesn't need to be overly bright, just a little bit to give it that nice look to it. For our metal pieces, we're gonna reapply some Ruin Lord Brass just to Bruce it up just a little bit. We're going to take our Carrick Stone and reapply that to our parchment that is hanging down. followed by some Ushabdi bone just to brighten up the edges a little bit on our parchment hanging down. And I just remember what these are called, purity seals. I just remember while I'm recording this. Yep. To brighten up our belt just a little bit, we're going to take some dual bowl, doom bowl brown, I can't talk today apparently, and we're going to do the edges on our belt just to give it that nice reddish brown color. To brighten up our fur coat again, we're not going to take this over the top, we're going to take some of that grace here we put on our base color that we washed with Nolan Oil, and we're going to take that and reapply it. Now, if you want to take it just a little bit farther, you can, and you could put some white in there if you really wanted to. I just didn't want to take it that far. And to brighten up our sword just a little bit, take that Necron compound again, spruce it up. And for our base, we're gonna take a dry brush of pure white and hit those rocky areas. Now I wanna keep this area very dull, mundane, gross looking. You can add more colors if you wanted to. I really just wanted to keep it dull. So we're gonna spruce this up with some white and then hit it with some rattling grime. And finally, your favorite part of painting this miniature because it means we're done. Some Abaddon Black on that rim. Looking fantastic. 
And that's it. You did it. It looks great. I like it. I love it. It looks fantastic. Look how good you did. And it wasn't that bad, really. It looks a little bit harder than it is, but it's really not. As always, I want to say thank you to all my YouTube members, all my subscribers, everybody who watches this. Leaves a comment interacts with me hit me up on my instagram at nerd.nights if you have any questions i love you guys all i do this for everybody who wants to get better at painting including myself because i feel like i get better every single time i do one of these videos but until next time paint on